Hey everybody, I wanted to talk a little bit about the different shots in golf and which ones really matter when it comes to separating the different levels of golfer. I did a video a while ago, well, about a month ago, comparing the impact positions of PGA Tour pros from 175 yards and guys who are playing in the Long Beach Open from 175 yards, just comparing what they looked like in impact and what they were doing in impact from 175 yards. The PGA Tour event had a purse of seven and a half million dollars and almost everybody that of the 30 people that I filmed there was a millionaire. And the guys in the Long Beach Open, uh, which had a purse of I think 150,000 or almost $200,000, none of those guys, I don't think any of those guys were millionaires from playing golf. So why did I choose 175 yards? There is a specific reason I chose that, but in the comments to the video, I saw a very common thing that I saw was, if you really wanted to see the difference in the levels of golfer, you should have been filming their putts or you should have been filming their chips. Because a lot of times we hear this thing <laughs> that's out there talking about how it's all about putting and it's all about putting and chipping and short game. Short game is so important. And of course, short game is crucially important, but is it the most important thing when it comes to telling the different level of golfer? So we're not gonna take my opinion about it. Let's take somebody who does this for a living and who helps the best players in the world separate themselves from other players who are doing it at an extremely high level. So I talked to a PGA Tour statistician named Richie Hunt. Richie works for NASA and uh, uh, currently works for NASA at the Kennedy Space Center and uh, does like high level math and statistic problems for NASA. And then also he works for numerous guys on the PGA Tour like Ben Crane, Charles Howe III, uh, Tony Finau, and he's worked for a lot of other guys too, creating reports on their trends, their statistics, the shots that they hit the best, the shots that they hit the worst, and really how they can separate themselves from the field, not only over the course of a season, because he'll make a report for the guys at the beginning and at the end of a season, but also he'll make a report for them before certain key events. He'll have a little thing and say, okay, this is how you've performed on this hole. Uh, these are shots that you should really concentrate on. These are holes you should really concentrate on because this is, if you can get a little better here and get a little tighter on uh, your spread from this range, it's going to make you climb up the leaderboard. And it's, uh, it's proven a lot of, uh, uh, I think three of Richie's guys were in the tour championship. So I asked Richie, I said, Okay, Richie, what shots really matter in golf as far as is it chipping and putting or when it comes to not only separating pros from other pros, but separating amateurs from other amateurs? And Richie wrote me back a long email that I was going to put on my website, but I think it'd be a lot easier for me to read it to you guys and you can make up your mind about what you think it really matters and also how you can use this information to get better at golf because I think it's a uh, one of the best emails that I've gotten when it comes to the subject of, okay, what should I be concentrating on? Not only, also there's a difference between, okay, what should I concentrate on today to make myself the best golfer I can be today? I think that's one thing. And then what should I concentrate on general to make me a better golfer? Like, okay, that's the whole th thing about be better is, okay, make me on a whole nother level. That might be totally different than what you con concentrate on day to day. So here's uh, Richie's, when I told him that I, I had um, sh filmed these guys from 175 yards and what he thought about what people should be into. Richie says, hey Brandon, hope you're doing well. I wanted to give you a brief rundown on some things to help you better understand the st statistical truths and patterns we see in golf. Much of this is in previous editions of Pro Golf Synopsis and some of it will be in the upcoming 2019 Pro Golf Synopsis book coming in December. So Richie at the end of every year puts out this amazing book that shows the trends of uh, golf on the PGA Tour. He has access to an incredible amount, way beyond um, what you see on the website, an incredible amount of data that he uh, goes through and uh, really puts it very clearly why certain guys are performing than other guys, statistically. Richie continues, as far as permanently lowering your handicap and reducing it by the largest amount, the higher the handicap, 
the more important driving the ball is. A golfer with a 5 handicap is likely better in each facet of the game than a 10 handicap, but the biggest difference is very likely to be the 5 handicap being a much better driver of the ball than the 10 handicap. And it's not just driving it more accurately, but driving it longer with more accuracy and more precision. I think a lot of golfers and instructors focus on accuracy and precision with the driver, but don't realize that hitting it longer is a key part of driving it better for many golfers. It is possible to achieve without sacrificing accuracy and consistency. Distance has its biggest impact on putting. So Richie here is saying, how far you hit your driver has the biggest impact on your putting that he puts in all caps here. The longer a player hits the ball, the shorter the length of the average birdie putt will be. This is not only due to getting shorter length birdie putts on par fives, but also on dog leg par fours. The longer hitter can take more aggressive lines on a lot of dog leg par fours because they can clear trees, bunkers, etc. And since they can take a more aggressive angle, they pick up even more yardage over the short hitters the shorter hitters. However, when you get to the tour level, iron play from 175 to 225 yards becomes more important than driving. It's sort of like players on tour have a prerequisite skill and speed with the driver in order to get on tour. While driving is important on tour, shots from 175 to 225 yards over the course of a season are more important, particularly Shots from 175 to 200 yards. From there, it depends on the course. Courses like Harbortown, shorter in length, tend to stress shorter approach shots from 150 to 175 yards, while Torrey Pines stresses shots from 200 to 225 yards. But in the end of a season, a shots from 175 to 225 yards count more than shots from 150 to 200. Richie continues. Instead of trying to determine strokes gained, which takes time and doesn't really factor in how actual tour players would do on the course you're playing, I utilize proximity to the hole. Proximity to the hole doesn't automatically equate to gaining strokes, but the correlation between the two is very strong. I use what is called fractional remaining length. This is a term from Mark Brody that he came up with. If you look at shots from the fairway on par three tee box, the average tour player has a fractional remaining length of 6%. For example, a tour player that is 150 yards away on a fairway approach, which is 450 feet, will hit it to 27 feet on average. The easy way I calculate this is I take the yardage, 150 yards, and multiply it by 18%. 150 times 18% equals 27 feet. It becomes easy to do in your head because you know 100 yards equals 18 feet, average proximity to the cup, and 200 yards equals 36 feet. So that's a little, um, if you want to know if you're hitting it as close as a tour player probably would from the fairway, you go from 100 yards they hit it around 18 feet from the cup, and from 200 yards they hit it around 36 feet from the cup. That's both 6%. All right, Richie continues. A mediocre shot would be 7%. FRL. Another thing I've tested with tour players from Champions Tour to PGA Tour to Mini Tour using TrackMan is that the average shot offline from the target is consistent across the board and it's 5% from the fairway or from a par 3 tee box. Hope this helps, Richie. So a lot of times I've said be better golfers a lot of times have been golfers who are plateaued. People who've been playing golf for a long time they feel like they've gotten to a certain level and they've plateaued. What Richie is saying is that if you want to make your handicap lower, the best way to do that is to put yourself on another level with your driver. So if you're hitting your driver, let's say ball speed 145 miles an hour, and you are hitting, let's say 50% of fairways, okay? If you can get your ball speed to 150 miles an hour and get your fairways to 60%, that is going to make you a whole nother level of golfer much faster than any of the other statistics he's looking at, including putting and everything else. Because that 
increase of your driver length and driver accuracy is going to make your putts much closer. It's going to give you shorter putts. It's going to uh, give you a little less pressure on your putter. So over the course of a season, obviously we've all had those rounds where we've hit every fairway and we've just missed every putt, you know, inside of uh, four feet or something like that. And then for the tour player, it gets a little bit more complicated, but what he's saying is think about the, uh, the ratio of what you have uh, left after you've hit your shot. So a good baseline to uh, put you into a tour category would be from 100 yards, you want to hit it to 18 feet, and from uh, 200 yards, you want to hit it to 36 feet. So that would put you getting it to with about 6% to the hole. So you've covered 94% of the distance and you've put it into that final 6% closer. That's Richie's, Richie's opinion. It also is uh, something that I believe. So a lot of times we hear so many pros say, hey, there's a, there's a driving range actually right, right there. Uh, you, you can maybe even see some guys there. And a lot of times we hear uh, people on YouTube and pros say, hey, look at all these jokers on the driving range banging driver. And, and, then, and then look at the, the chipping green and the putting green, totally empty. If these people really wanted to be better at golf, if they really cared about getting better at golf, they would put the driver away and they would go uh, do some putting and chipping. The, the average golfer that is just banging driver constantly, maybe they intuitively understand that if they did hit their driver a lot better, they would be better. The real question is, what will make you a better driver? Even uh, Phil Mickelson has, has said that one of the things that helps his driver the most is hitting uh, fairway bunker, uh, not fairway, but uh, greenside bunker shots. He says the more he practices greenside bunker shots, the better his driver gets. So it's not necessarily that hitting driver all the time is gonna make your driver that much better. It could be that chipping will make your iron shots and driver better. It's a very strange thing, and it also goes a lot to this concept that Tim Yelverton put me on to with putting that goes for the entire game, saying there's a huge difference between testing and training. And most people, all they're doing is testing and testing and then retesting and testing, kind of like uh, if somebody's trying to lose weight. They get on the scale, they weigh 200 pounds. Uh, they, get, they get irritated about it. Two seconds later, they get on the sale again. They weigh 200 pounds. They haven't done anything to lose weight. All they've done is retest themselves. And that's basically what everybody is doing on the driving range. Very, very few people are doing any training on the driving range or on the putting green or anything like that. They're just testing and testing and testing and hoping that leaks into some improvement. It doesn't really. Not usually anyway. The training is the thing that leaks, that gets into improvement. I'm gonna do a big video about that at a facility that has a GC quad and stuff like that so that I can really show you guys what I'm thinking about with that. But I wanna know your thoughts. Put in the comments. I'm gonna make sure that Richie sees this video. So any of the comments that you want Richie to respond to, just write Richie, when it comes to statistics or you know what about this or that, because this is a, a hot area that's contested. I think it's pretty clear that for pros, they want to be, uh, Richie calls it the red zone, you want to really be concentrating. If you're trying to make, uh, make a living off of playing golf, you really want to be concentrating from 175 to 225 yards. And if you want to get better at golf, you really want to, con you know, you're, you're a golfer and you want to just change your level. You got to concentrate on what can I do to make my driver better? And making your driver better is hitting it in the face more often, is being more on plane, is having better impact and is being faster. Those are the pieces of becoming a better driver. And those are the pieces that can take you to another level, I believe. I wanna know your thoughts. Put, put your comments below. Uh, and also uh, put any comments for Richie or any questions for Richie below as well. I really appreciate Richie writing that letter to me. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel and watching the videos. That's it. Click the subscribe button. And I'll see you later. Bye.